So I decided to go stealth camping and where I went was I climbed up here, up to that hill, or maybe it was up there. And then that took two hours, slept on the top of the mountain, had a lovely night overlooking the sea, sheltered from the wind. And then I came down this side, found a riverbed, dry riverbed, and that took only an hour to get down. So somewhere in, in here is a bridge, and we're going to go and sleep on top of that mountain tonight. So we're going to first cross the river. But our bridge is still somewhat in place. Got a little stair down here. Wow. If I wanted to do, I could just park here. It's a lovely little cavern here to start camping. Now, after bashing through the river and all this bush, there's absolutely no path. Just look at the gorgeous view that you're rewarded with. There's the sea over there. Now just have a look at this beautiful little place here. It's flat, soft ground. There's almost like a little cave here. This is now looking sort of northwest. There's the sea. We're at a beach in the distance there's the Glen Cairn Expressway, Capri Village somewhere over there. And I was thinking I could just be sitting at home, program, computing, watching TV, whatever. But here I've seen new territory, done a hike, planning to stealth camp completely different area oh wow the beauty of it is it's a memory it's something different it's something I'll always remember now this place is pretty secretive and hidden but just because this is like a saddle of a hill there is a very not a well-worn path at all but there's a slight path some people have occasionally come past here and i can't imagine so i can't imagine anyone's going to come here tonight but and this is like a little bowl so it's well hidden as long as there's no light and no noise i'm sure it's going to be fantastic there is a fairly full moon it's a waxing gibbous tonight it's about three quarters full so there will be good visibility but it's just so nice when you get away from everything you're forced to think your own thoughts there's nothing to entertain you i brought nothing to entertain me except food this lovely tea and yeah it's just a wonderful time to to contemplate, to meditate, to pray, to be close to God, to to think on, you know, the nature, the wonderful nature of God. Is God good? You know, people like to argue so many bad things happen to good people. And if God's all powerful, couldn't he prevent it? So then they just get to thinking that God is not good and he's not but I say each person's experience is their own. I have only experienced the goodness of God. Scripture talks about the goodness and severity of God. I've never experienced the severity. I think the severity is reserved for people who hate Him and who want to oppose Him. But I've just experienced the goodness of God. That doesn't mean I've had an easy life. It just means 
But I've always known that God has got my back. Even when there's big problems, health problems, whatever kind of problem, everyone goes through problems. But you could say, but look at these Christians that get cancer. God could have saved them. So, you know, I, I just walk my own little walk. I, I can't speak for them. I can only speak for me. I saw the goodness of God with my wife's death. Recently, my cat's death. You know, just the kindness, the painlessness of it. And, you know, I mean, people seem to think that God is in the business of just totally removing pain. I mean, some of the people he loved the most suffered the most at times. I mean, they lived a generally okay life. But there were times when they were called upon to suffer. Jesus Christ being one of them. God's own son suffered more than anybody else. Then all the apostles were martyred after living lives of shipwrecked and beatings and, and persecution, whippings. The prophets suffered. Even Abram and company suffered. Job suffered. So, I mean... I don't. I think if you're going to take that as your metric, good people do suffer. Everyone suffers. It's it's kind of why we need God to to escape suffering. It's why we look forward to a better world without suffering. And the point is, God is always there to help you through the suffering. He's not going to remove the suffering, but he he helps you through it. He. I mean, in in the case of Jesus and the prophets and the apostles, they all got a huge reward for their suffering. They showed that they were prepared to take a bit of pain for an awful lot of gain in the future. So, I mean, that kind of suffering, martyrdom suffering, I think everyone understands, where you suffer for a cause. The early Christians were happy to get thrown into the arena with the lions, knowing that they would be with Christ and have a greater reward. I think that's marvelous that people see that it's the slow grinding painful suffering in our eye as i say we all have our own experiences i'm not i'm just praying to god that i don't get that kind of grinding terrible suffering but i'm just so grateful for every day like take for example I just had a few hours to spare and, he, and I could have been doing anything ordinary but I did something extraordinary and now I'm going to have a memory for the rest of my life of sleeping in this beautiful little bowl on the top of a mountain. Oh, I think it's just going to be amazing. I think it's really important to have a correct perception of God. God is good. There's just that is that is like a baseline fact. That is a mantra for me. God is good. And anything else that appears different is just things working them, they, themselves out. God is good. God will always not allow us to suffer more than we can bear. He will help us through it. Will make sure that the suffering yields a great reward in character, in perseverance, in love, in Oh, just gratitude to him when it ends. There's just so many things. I mean, I'm sure I've, I've had many health problems. I'm just so glad that I could make it up here. Two hours at least, maybe, of hiking or one and a half. I don't know how long it took. I was bashing through waist-high bush along no paths, up, scrambling up rocks, almost doing a bit of mountain climbing to get up top here. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to, I think this is, this, this is better, this is the best of this five-star accommodation. This is stealth glamping. This is glamorous camping. I brought my airbed. Oh, this ground alone, this sea sand that I'm lying on at the moment is soft. I could almost fall asleep right here. But I've got the airbed, which I'll blow up later on. And now we just hope we don't get disturbed because there's a little bit of, I mean, this bowl is in, if anyone had to walk into this bowl, they would stumble over me, but it's not on any part. There's no reason why they should. So, I'm really looking forward to a good night's sleep here. And, yeah, I think it's just my experience of God. He's been just so good. Cool.
as I say, in the in the moments that really matter, like my wife's death, as I said, where she died of COVID from multiple strokes, because the COVID was causing clotting. It was it was a quick, painless death. So yeah, I'm grateful to God for if it's going to happen, to just know that you have him in your corner, batting for you, looking after you, being your corner man, and rooting for you, and he's never going to leave you, he's always there, but it's so important, I think, to have a, have a positive, great attitude, that God, and just know God is good, That's there's, there's nothing that can take away from that, there's nothing, there's nothing that you see that could contradict that. Nothing bad that could happen to you. I mean, bad things are going to happen. We're going to eventually die. We're going to eventually die of something. Bad things will happen, but I'm just so grateful for everything that one has and for, as I say, this beautiful opportunity to stealth camp here. Well, the moon is coming up there. It's quite a big moon. It's so there's the moon. So we can have plenty of light tonight. There's the little seaside village of Murdoch. The light's beginning to come on. Now that the sun has set. It's a bit hard to see, but these rocks, this rocky outcrop is protecting, protecting us from the wind. And there is the moon. Well, it's 3.45 in the morning. There is Long Beach and Nurduk. You can see the moon beginning to set over the sea. Well, I had such a comfortable night's sleep on my airbed, dreamt. It was really lovely. Went to sleep under the constellation of Orion. Woke up under the constellation of Scorpio. There's the Southern Cross and the pointers in the sky. The whole Milky Way. It was just so wonderful. And um, saw a shooting star as I woke up. Just broke up into a whole smear of little, like little particles of dust. Let's show you just the last of there's a stir fry, the last of it, which we're gonna have now. Had some of it for supper. So about being out here is you're forced with nothing else to do to think your own thoughts it's like you're not watching TV so nothing's guiding your thoughts you're not listening to the radio nothing's channeling your thoughts you're not on social media no, I like social media. If you go on YouTube, you're there because you've looked up something and it's you that's determining what you're watching. I do not like advert advertisements though because I've never bought any of the chat that they're advertising so it just is wasting my time is what I feel. So I'd love to live in a world without advertisement.
so the thing about being out here is you you're deciding what you're going to think and normally it's just a certain awe and gratitude and peace and it's like a little mini holiday being out here I always like watching the stars they like my friends wow that was a good comfortable sleep well I do like to see um, satellites moving around in the sky when I was young and went camping we never saw satellites in the sky can you imagine what some primitive tribesmen would be thinking about wow what's happened to the sky suddenly there's these gods moving around in the sky is there something something going to happen is it the end of the world or whatever <laughs> can you imagine they've got to try and now explain why the the stars suddenly started moving around i'm just going to turn the camera around and show you this rock that i'm camped next to It's called Table Mountain Sandstone. And sandstones are formed, they sedimentary rocks that are formed when under flooding conditions, when water uh, washes a whole lot of sand and rocks together and then it gets covered and then over time it forms kind of like a cement and, and then it becomes a rock. And you see inside this table mountain sandstone, you see little beautifully rounded pebbles. You can see that they've been washed um, round by, they're like seashore pebbles. You can see they've been tumbled. And it probably takes a long time or a lot of flooding. It takes a lot of tumbling to get rocks so beautiful and round. So what is interesting though about this table mountain sandstone is it's a very ancient rock. It must be well over 500 million years old because there's no fossils in it. I love fossils, but they, they, there's no fossils to be found. Even as I'm looking up here, I see a shooting, uh, a satellite moving. I wonder if I can see a second one. And they say it's always darkest before dawn. That's because the moon is now set. The sky is beautifully dark, so it's so easy to see satellites. Actually, perfect conditions the sky is so wonderful but to get back to the sandstone so this is this is very ancient sandstone it was formed in a flood obviously but not the noah flood because in the time of the noah flood there were animals and plants around and so if this stone had been formed at the time of noah animals and plants would have been incorporated into the sandstone and would have formed fossils together with the little rounded pebbles that you see but this is this like throughout the world there are sandstones where there's absolutely no fossils in them and they normally the lower down more ancient sandstones so if you look at table mountain sandstone you can see these three pebbles there there and there they beautifully rounded little stones you can see that they've been they've been formed under conditions where they've been tumbled into smooth little pebbles and the rest of the matrix or whatever is sand so it seems to weather into these little bowls that look like this now just have a look this bowl is full of these little beautifully rounded weathered stones this is what Glen Cairn looks like early in the morning as it's dawning towards sun 